All right, so you've been introduced to the wave equation in one dimension, um, which I've written down uh, again here for you. Um, this, as it's written in particular here, describes uh, waves propagating along a string. Again, the y-coordinate is the vertical displacement of the, the string as the pattern passes by and going in the x-direction. And the speed of the wave is given by the square root of the tension over the... Uh, uh, mass density per unit length mu. Okay, so this is the mathematical equation we derived uh, in the last online lecture. Um, now I want to talk about solutions to this equation. Um, so it turns out there are infinitely many solutions to this equation. Um, there, basically, there's one requirement um, for a function to be a solution of this equation. It has to be a function of a particular argument. Okay, let me show you that. So if I imagine my y as a function of x and t. Okay, so again, this is the the displacement of the string away from horizontal as a function of position and time. Okay, so there's going to be a pattern um, of displacement that will propagate as a wave. Um, if this y function um, is a function only of one argument, so it's a function of both x and t, but it turns out that uh, x and t appear together always in a certain way. So there's one argument, and that argument is x plus or minus vt. Okay, this will be a solution to this equation of any function. So I could have um, you know, any or any function I like exponential of x plus or minus vt would be a solution. Complex exponential of x plus or minus vt, which would be a sine wave, is a solution. As long as you have the only argument where x and t show up, they show up always together in this form. Okay. So um, uh, what I'll do is I'll write this in a shorthand. Let me call this stuff in the um, parentheses here. I'll call it squiggle. Really, that's casi, I guess. Um, but I'm going to call this thing x plus or minus vt. Um, okay, and now to go through and um, and prove that to you mathematically. So uh, if I take a derivative of something like this, of this function, um, so let's, let's still call it y. So dy dt, the only argument y has is squiggle. And so I use the chain rule to figure out this derivative. So it's going to be dy d squiggle, that's the only argument of y, but squiggle depends on t. So d squiggle dt. And this is going to be plus or minus v times d squiggle d. Oh, sorry, I got that wrong. Hold on. The um, d squiggle dt is what gives you v. Okay. So this, if I take a time derivative of squiggle, I pick up the uh, plus or minus v from the time derivative of, of that object um, times dy d C or squiggle, your choice. All right. Now the second time derivative proceeds in the same way. So I can just take another time derivative here. And what I'm going to do is just introduce another plus or minus v, and I'll end up with v squared um, times the second derivative of this function y with respect to its argument squiggle. Okay. Now um, I can do the same procedure for x because um, squiggle is linear with x. There's no coefficient. Um, d squiggle dx is just 1. And so the same kind of procedure will give me d squared y dx squared equals d squared y d squiggle squared. Okay. All right, now with those two things, if I look up at my wave equation um, and just plug these things in, um, I get for the dy, d squared y dt squared, I plug in v squared d squared y d squiggle squared, and now I have a minus v squared times dy dx squared, and that's just going to be the same as d squared y d squiggle squared, and my equation is satisfied. Okay, And again, I have made no mention of the actual shape of y. I've only asserted that the dependence of the function y on x and t only appears, uh, the x and t only appear together in the combination x plus or minus vt. Okay.
So there's, again, infinitely many solutions to this equation. Now, what does it mean to depend only on x plus or minus vt? Okay. Now, thinking physically about this situation, we've got a rope, okay, maybe tied at one end, which we, you know, jiggle up and down. Okay. Now, what we'll learn is that by jiggling this way, th this rope up and down, we create a pattern. Okay. And the tension in the rope will make that pattern propagate. No matter what the pattern is, so I can, using my hand, jiggle the rope up and down in a certain way to make a pattern. And let me just draw it in red. So if I make a pattern like this, but using my, move my hand up and down, um, the, this pattern is just going to move to the right, unchanged, with velocity v. Okay, so if I look later in time, I'll have this pattern, you know, down here. We'll look, that's supposed to look the same. <laughs> um, and it will just propagate down until it hits the end of the rope. Okay, um, so it says any pattern um, will just propagate off um, away from the point where it was created uh, with a speed v, which is the speed v in the equation that we that we uh, derived. Okay. Um, all right. So let's let's look at that. Uh, why x plus or minus vt gives you that behavior. So if I look at a let's take a a pulse. Let me plot it here. So here's t. Uh, sorry. What I want to do is plot um, x. Okay versus y. And let's imagine, let's make a simple pulse here. I'll go back to black. Let's imagine I have a just a pulse that looks like that. Okay. Um, and if this, so now this is y um, at x for t equal to zero. Okay. Now if I consider t not equal to zero, um, I know what's going to happen is I'm going to have this same um, same pattern. So uh, another way to write this, let me go back up here, is this is y of x plus or minus vt is drawn here, but I have t equal to zero. Okay. So this is y of x. Okay. Um, now what I can do to look at later times is replace that x with x plus or minus vt. And we have to pick one of the two. And we'll figure out what the plus means and what the minus means. Let's pick minus for now. So let's, let's say, oops, let's say that we have um, at later times, oops, at later time, um, what we want to do is plot x, y of x minus vt. Okay, that's the the um, solution that we're choosing. Um, and so what this means is I should take the same pattern, the same y that I plotted as a function of x. But now I'm going to consider um, uh, a time that's a little bit later. And so the way to think about this is as I'm affecting, effect, effectively shifting the x-axis, okay? Because what I'm going to do is if I pick an instant in time, so this again is t equal to zero, um, at later time, I'm going to shift my x-axis, okay, based on this offset. So t, I'm picking an instant in time, so t is a fixed value, v is a fixed value, so I just move my position of x equal to zero to the left or to the right, and we can figure it out. So the new position of x equal to zero will be where x minus vt is equal to zero, okay? So it will be on the old x-axis, it'll be at x equals vt, okay? We'll keep the old x-axis, but basically the, the point that used to be at x, x equal to zero, the, the part of the pattern that used to be at x equal to zero, this piece, is now going to be located at x equals vt, okay? So the whole um, pattern just shifts along the x-axis, and so now if I look later in time, so here's where it used to be, like that, and now here's x equals vt, here's y, and now this pattern will have moved over like that. Okay, so you, it, you have this pattern that you've created, and the whole pattern is just moved to the right um, with speed v, and what that results in is um, 
replacing the argument with x minus vt. Okay, you take y of x, replace it with y of x minus vt, and at later instances in time, uh, it's just slid to the right. Okay, so the minus sign here, if I use x minus vt, that indicates it's propagating to the right towards positive x. Okay, if I were to continue the propagation some later time, you know, it would look like this. This is going to be some other time. Let's say vt, this is vt1, vt2, and so the wave will just, the pattern will just slide over to the right. Okay, now if I chose a um, minus, uh, plus sign, sorry. So if now I say my solution is y is some function of x plus vt, now what happens is I shift my um, pattern back the other way. So at, for if, if I have a pattern again with centered on t equal to, uh, x equal to 0, so this is y versus x, and this is at t equal to 0, um, the position of a, a particular piece of the pattern, so what used to be at x equal to 0, um, will now be at x plus vt equal to 0. Okay, and so that's going to shift it towards the left. So the new position of where that of that um, same value of the function f will be shifted to the left. Okay, so this pattern will then move over this way. Okay, so the plus sign indicates propagation in the negative x direction and the minus sign indicates propagation in the positive x direction. And again, the physics of this is that the pattern that you create by shaking your hand at the end of the rope just gets propagated by the tension in the string um, or rope or whatever, um, in, in, but it really in, in either direction. Okay, it turns out if I take, now if I take a, a rope and I jiggle it at one end, there's only one way for the wave to go. So it's going to go this way. Okay, but if I take that same rope, and let's imagine now it's tied between two walls or it's tied between the two ends of a guitar, for example, and I pluck it in the middle. So now I lift the string up and let it go here. What will happen is you'll get pulses that'll go both directions. Okay, so both solutions, uh, x plus and minus vt, will arise from that plucking of the string in the middle, and you get propagations in both directions.